where is innovation coming from? I see, you know, this is like Uber, but for cats. I mean, we see a lot of this kind of copying. And I don't know if Silicon Valley and Alley are creating products for Joey Bag of Donuts, you know, in, in Minneapolis, you know, anymore. We're still making stuff to feed our own ecosystems. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, we've talked about a lot of this stuff. I mean, where do you see innovation actually happening at a global scale? I mean, it, it, when I travel, I, I spoke in the last, uh, four months in Sao Paulo, Brazil. They're all using Uber and Airbnb and WeWork. I talked to a guy who's uh, doing web design for clients all over the world on WeWork. Uh, you go to Australia, you hear the same thing. You go to China and they have their own versions of all these things, right? Uh, and, and so, and you, you go to Australia, you hear the same answers that most people have had an Uber ride. And this company is only five years old. It, it, so. I, I see a lot of uh, innovation that Silicon Valley has, has done that crosses that chasm that gets from the nerds who try, love trying new things and seeing if they can work to, uh, uh, to, uh, to ma mainstream audiences, Stephanie right? And you're seeing different kinds of innovation coming out of the developing world because uh, you know, if, you, if you're making a $5 a day, you're, you probably don't have your own cell phone. You probably are sharing a cell phone with other people if you if you have one in your in your family group or your uh, community. But there's still the very small screen, uh, single chip phones that we used in what '89. So they're still catching up to where we were in '89 in in some ways. And in other ways, they're building very intricate business models because of that, right? And Pisa came out of that world, and they're trading money uh, off of phone to phone, and uh, in a way that we just don't do here. So they picked up a different use case, and that's going to be interesting for us to study. Uh, what are the use cases that are going to come back to us, right? Uh, I just visited China, and everybody didn't want my business card. They just said, P pull up your, your phone and let, let's, let us scan your phone. And they're really into that. Here in America, we haven't picked up on that yet, right? You can do that in Snapchat, but we haven't fi figured that out culturally because we're behind them in a, in a way. Um, and they're behind us in, a, in other ways, right? Uh, I met the, uh, the girl who uh, runs the self-driving team at Alibaba in China, and she says, I know I'm behind Google and, and other companies here uh, in self-driving technologies. Um, but I think she's going to catch up quickly because she has more chaos on the streets to study than we do in Silicon Valley, right? Silicon Valley freeway is a pretty easy thing to drive drive down, you, you go down a street in Shanghai and it has a thousand people on the street and the, I was driving there and motorcycles are driving the wrong way toward you and stuff. So, so they might uh, figure out how, how to make their machine learning systems learn faster than ours and pass us by in a decade. Most people are not on 4G networks, are not thinking about 5G networks, we're thinking about them. So we're, we're there with Broadcom and, and, and anybody developing next generation technology for, for networks. but. In the emerging markets, in the developing world, people are not there. And um, a great example is Facebook, which most of us are using now. Uh, they discovered pretty quickly when they started trying to launch in emerging markets, the experience is not that great. So they came to us and said, you know, how can we figure this out? In a challenging network environment, 2G, 2.5G, 3G, which, by the way, most people in the world are on, um, they don't even have devices like the ones we're sitting on and sitting with now and, and uh, using to periscope. So, so what do you do? So, we emulate those networks right in, in places like Silicon Valley or at our device uh, verification labs, which are all over the world. And we help developers understand what progressions they need to go to to deliver a better experience. In that case, Facebook, how do you get that out to a device that's not 5G ready, certainly not 4G ready. It's in a challenging network environment. So we can go to those places. We're in 180 countries, so we, we do that work on the ground with operators, partners like AT&T. But we also can bring that back to more myopic places like where I live in Silicon Valley and do it right in a lab environment. So we can, we can look at uh, Nairobi. What, Mark does, Zuckerberg. What, do the, what do the conditions look like there? We can bring that, we can allow the developers to go through Mark that. Zuckerberg takes away iPhones from engineers and forces them to use one of these lower end phones and he turns off his network so that they have to experience life as a, uh, as a 2G. Yeah, it's network. amazing and I mean for us it's also been a learning process in, in this market to see that we start those conversations with a developer saying, this is Wi-Fi, okay? That was your 4G network, you don't have that anymore. This is what you have. And mostly what they find when they start up their applications is they just don't work. 